Mississippi voters will cast their ballots tomorrow in what may be the tightest governor's race we've seen since 2019. 12 News senior political correspondent Richard Legg took a look back at the 2019 governor's race between former Attorney General Jim Hood and then Lieutenant Governor Tate Reeves. And Richard, what stood out? Well, Byron, many of the issues are the same, and many of the attacks are the same as well when you look at both those races. What's different this year is the sheer amount of money being spent and raised from both candidates and who voters will choose to tackle the biggest issues facing the state. Democratic candidate for governor Brandon Presley and incumbent Republican Governor Tate Reeves have spent a combined $21 million on this race. Brandon Presley has led the fundraising efforts between the two candidates, bringing in just over $11 million, out fundraising Reeves by $5 million since January. Presley has shattered fundraising records for a Democratic gubernatorial candidate, surpassing what former Democratic candidate Jim Hood collected by $5.6 million. Presley has benefited from high-dollar out-of-state contributions, including a $5.8 million donation from the Democratic Governors Association. Governor Reeves has received $1 million from the Republican Governors Association and utilized his legacy campaign accounts. When compared to 2019, Five million dollars more have been spent in total from both candidates, both using their millions to launch statewide engagement operations. The question remains, will Brandon Presley's financial momentum and voter outreach efforts be enough to pull off the upset in a Republican stronghold? When it comes to the issues the candidates are running on, few things have changed. Raising teacher pay, Mississippi's aging infrastructure, and issues surrounding Mississippi's health care remain key talking points. Presley has pledged to expand Medicaid on day one if elected, while Reeves is unchanged from 2019. We can't afford not to expand Medicaid. Uh, I, I believe that we have got to take these steps in Mississippi to not only help 230,000 working people get health care and save our hospitals and create 16,000 jobs, but also to bring in $1 billion worth of revenue to Mississippi. I have been opposed to Obamacare uh, expansion in our state because I don't believe that we need to add 300,000 able-bodied Mississippians onto the welfare rolls. What they don't tell you about Obamacare expansion is that of the 300,000 that would go onto the rolls, about 100,000 of those uh, are currently you know, own private insurance. And so the reimbursement rates to the providers for that 100,000 people would actually go down. The candidate that prevails on Tuesday will take control of the state at a crucial time in its history. With dozens of rural hospitals in the state facing closure, the highest level of infant mortality in the country, and 19% of the state in poverty, there's plenty of work to be done. But with recent gains in education, state and federal investments in health care and infrastructure, both candidates are focused on the future. At the end of the day, we have a very clear choice to make. Do we want to continue down the path of conservative leadership in which we stand up to the Biden administration, that we tell them that we're not going to take Mississippi in the direction that they're trying to take uh, America? Or are we going to go down that path where the Biden administration is going to um, tell our Democrat liberal governor what to do? Uh, I don't think that's going to be a very difficult choice for the people of our state. I think voters are just ready to turn the page on Tate Reeves. Uh, I hear that from Republicans. I hear it from independents. Of course, I hear it from Democrats. And the coalition that we're building is truly uh, a coalition of of people across party lines, but black Mississippians, white Mississippians, people from North Mississippi, Central Mississippi, and South Mississippi. And this is a coalition that is gonna uh, bring home a victory on November the 7th. And on top of all of that, a runoff is still possible. Independent candidate Gwendolyn Gray has withdrawn from the race, but her name will be on the ballot. She has endorsed Brandon Presley, but that could still pull votes from both candidates.